Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Blessings to everybody as we bring you the love of the Lord here at our 6 p.m. connection here, connection of the branch to the vine. The connection to the branch to the vine. Again, this is Brian Hewitt, Anita, and the man. We bring you the love of the Lord from MCN Ministries Bible Way LA here in Los Angeles, California. And here's our broadcast today. We are doing the impact, continuing with our U, U Factor series of prayer. Prayer gives you limitless power through God. So with this limitless power, of course, what are we going to do? Let's pray. Let's go before the throne of God. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your endless rhyme of love that brings us to the, your road of grace, that leads us to the straight and narrow. Where many are called, but few are chosen. You have chosen us. We lift up the rays of praise every day for you as you pour down the new mercies of this day. If we are in the part of the world that we are coming to right, an end of our day or coming to a beginning part of the day, the sun rises as, as we receive the joy in the morning. As, uh, as our day ends, let's get, to, get into the fellowship of one another with the power of prayer, with the power of the scripture. In Jesus' name, we love thee. Brothers and sisters, what an exciting, challenging world we live in. We move into all types of the phases of our praises. And again, whelp, lioness, lion. We, we, God in a twinkling of an eye can change your life. But he wants, with his time and grace, mold us, guide us with his experiences as he molds us on his potter's will, as he brings us to his everlasting love, his everlasting truth. With this, brothers and sisters, our power is, is limitless. We have we are removed from the cancer called pride because pride does not have humility but faith does we move into the outstretched arms of Christ who comes off the cross and with those outstretched arms he hugs us and embraces us for we are now redeemed we have gone forward to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior now sounds easy doesn't it sounds like I just lost my mind and became this, um, you know, Jesus freak. It's far from being a Jesus freak. I, I, I do live in the name of Jesus. For there is nothing too hard for God, which leads us to our foundation scripture found in Jeremiah 32, ver verse 17. Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. There is nothing too hard for thee. When we look at the world, with all the trials, troubles, tribulations, heartaches, we sometimes ask, where is God? Why doesn't He do something? It is that, it is that God is not able, it is a situation too large or too difficult for God. But God that has the majesty, and we can be the habitation of His glory, the majesty of God's limitless power. God told Abraham that he was going to have a son in his old age. And Abraham was a little quizzled and about the whole expression. In Genesis 18:14, God asked Abraham, Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Later, Jeremiah gives the answer, There is nothing too hard for thee. There is no promise too hard for God to keep. There are over 30,000 promises in the Bible, and God will keep his word. If God made this promise, he cannot lie. There is no promise too hard for God to keep. There is no prayer too hard for God to answer. Jesus said in Matthew 21, verse 22, And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believe and ye shall receive. When you ask in prayer, believe and you'll receive. You hear me say this often and often. Matthew, uh, Mark 11, 22, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. There is no problem too hard for God to solve. God specializes in these in things that seem impossible. Now, God may not solve your problem the way you want Him to, but there's no problem too hard for God to solve. 
There's no person too hard for God to save. God can save anyone if he'll come to him. God chose you. God created you. God loves you. And God is bringing forth his endless power upon you. But God is not going to come racking down your walls and, and say, Hey, I made you. You, you. you know, come on, let's go. Well, we do have a Holy Ghost party for you and I to go to. And that's called, uh, and this particular club that's as cold as eternity. We're going to be partying in Holy Ghost parties for all of eternity. Yet, with eternity, the, the blessings of eternity, kingdom bound, living in the heavens, heaven, we all, all have a great deal of responsibility for each other. All of us must understand that we have a lifestyle, we, and obviously so many of us feel that if we move into God, we have to declare some oath of poverty. We don't, we don't, we don't. I never did, nor will I. I was part of the music scene, I was part of the th entertainment world, I was part of the communication industry. It was so, such a competitive industry. I loved it. I loved it. And, I, and God, while I was in these years of lean years of ministry, God was grooming me for the now, today, the now of faith. Not the, just like the now was yesterday, it is today, the now. God is a faith God. God does not bring over his new mercies of yesterday to me. It's not like um, Anita's giving me her leftover meatloaf for, for today. God does not bring over new mercies from yesterday. We have to understand we, as born into, into, the, into the world of sin, the mystery man is nothing but limiting power. We have compromises that come to us, in the, and when we do fall into these compromises, how often have, I, have the promise has been, don't worry, nobody will know. Yet, the counsel of the wicked shall destroy itself. This broadcast is coming to you upon uh, the evening, starting at the 6 p.m. hour when Greece just received some good news upon this time that it is it was about 1.30 in the morning when I got some relief from the IMF. Yet it's not enough. Finances can only provide the limiting power of the ways of man. We must express ourselves in, in leadership as the limitless power from the majesty of God. Did you know that, again, there's nothing too hard for God. Yet, let me tell you how you can limit God and bind the hands that want to bless you with an unwilling spirit. Dragging and dragging and doing nothing and nothing and nothing. Having a conventional lifestyle that Satan can pretty much do today's crossword puzzle without any much effort from you. Also, the unwilling spirit has no gifts. Once Satan has suffocated you away from any type of hope, he's kept you from faith, which keeps you from love. Imagine that. Imagine that. In my early years of, of ministry, in the early 90s, while still performing and promoting shows and making money for my young family, there were, there were, there was a young man and a young woman that had nothing left inside them from addictions to losing their homes and living, this is in western New York where it gets, this type of the air can be 40 below zero from the Great Lakes winds coming off and very, very bitter. And pretty much they did say that they knew what they were doing and that they did not need anybody, anyone's help. Yet, one did eventually come forward and, and lived in the shelters that I was preaching at. And God brings us to a, a crossroads. Either we go to hell first class or to heaven first class. There's no in-between. 
and we are expressing ourselves for the love of the Lord. And what we want all of you to understand you have the throne of God echoing in your name. All in the name of Jesus. All in the authority of his love. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And I know we should practice this verse often and often and often. All, all in the name of Jesus, all in the name of change. Why did God create you? Why did God make you to have a relationship with Him to, so we could have our physical bodies be habitation for His glories, to be, a, as we were once a witness from God, we are now witnesses for God. We are bringing one soul to another, to God's kingdom. If we give God our glory, God is no more glory. If we give God our power, God blesses because God has everything. We we submit ourselves before the throne of God. Lord, take me, love me, I am yours. But when we give God our worship, when we give God our love, that meets the desire in the heart of the Father. The desire of the one that created created you and I. And we have an all that the word of God dwell in you richly. That's preaching and all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in our songs, in your songs, in our t day, our daily bread. Pick up the Bible. Pick up your heart. Pick up your old life. And turn it over to the, to the Lord. Let God come inside you and circumcise that old heart from you. Move away the, remove the, away the stony edges and give you a new heart. Give you a new love. You're on a unique mission. You are, we are genuine. We're not perfect, but the more we try to be perfect, as God in heaven is perfect, the more genuine we are. So, what have we learned over the past, let's say, ten, Ten sermons, ten Bible studies that my wife and I have told. Take the cup of wisdom and drink it. This is a beautiful wisdom that gives you her own cup. And it never, ever, ever is empty. The more you ask, the more she gives you a refill. She brings you to, and she herself is a jeweler. And she gives you the three rings of royalty, hope, faith, and love. And she baptizes you in her own river in the name of eternity, in the name of Jesus Christ, the creator of creation and gifts that you were birthed with become more accented. The explosion of creativity flows from your, from your belly, from your new heart. And we worship in everything, everything we do because what did God, what did Jesus say to us? Eat this, drink this in remembrance of me, everything we speak, everything that we do. Everything that we say, we do in remembrance of Christ. And it all starts with one basic step. It all starts with one, one moment with Christ. Do not delay in receiving Christ. I bring two people up that I have met that I do know. One, the head of a very f large financial organization to the world, and one, a brilliant journalist of the BBC. Of those two, I know one would definitely come to the Lord. One other would be afraid of offending the people that she represents in the world. But that is what Anita and the men do every day very successfully. You know you're doing the Lord's work when you are offending people. You, you are making people uncomfortable. 
God does not want to get put under your feet a comfort zone. He wants you moving. So let's go forward in the unison of prayer. For whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 